Because you see, their actions gave us a voice. As James wrote, I will not let prejudice or its attendant humiliations or injustices bear me down. We cannot let one person, one million, one hundred million, deter us from creating a more perfect union. There's a song we used to sing in elementary school, I'm sure you all have heard it. <clears throat> let there be peace on earth and very good. Uh, <laughs> we have some, have some uh, music lessons after the session. Uh, <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be diversity. Let there be inclusiveness. Let there be cultural respect on earth, in our community, on our college campuses. Let it begin with me. Let it begin with you. And as Martin said, any time is the right time to do the right thing. You thought I was going to say another time. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Right. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicings rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound as a rolling sea. Today as I close, and I promised I was going to be short, didn't I? <laughs> and I go to my seat. You see, I stand on the backs of my ancestors. I would not be here today if it was not for them. And it's not just about family lineage, but it's about the struggles, the pain. It was about the hard work that my grandmother put in to make sure that little Fifi would make it in the world. James Walton Johnson speaks to me. His words remind me of the stories of my great, great, great aunt. Yes, she was still alive until last year. My great grandmother and my grandmother who would tell me this. These stories about picking cotton, about crosses being burned in their yard, about Papa having to stand up at night in the window to watch for the Ku Klux Klan and make sure that he would not come that they would not come in and do harm to his family. They talked about how many miles they would have to walk to and from school when the soles of their shoes had almost walked to the very last piece. They told me about having to take substandard jobs even though they graduated from high school and went to technical programs that they had to be nannies and maid servants because they couldn't get another job in town. When my mother would send me back to Kansas and Oklahoma every summer, and I'm sure some of you remember that as a child, being sent to grandma every summer, <laughs> I would hear my grandmother crying, praying, working all night. And I would wonder why why would she cry and pray? And actually, it scared me really bit. But as I grew older and I stopped spending my summers in Oklahoma and Kansas, my grandmother would write me letters. And those letters were pretty long. Six, seven handwritten pages. And they would discuss our history. Why we need to have faith. She would tell me about our family struggles, about the lives of the family members that I had met as a child, all to give me the reason why I must do well, that I must do my best in school, that I must honor them because they will never have the opportunities that I do. My grandmother died one week before I left to go to college. And on the first day that I walked on Norfolk State's ground, it was her birthday. And the last bit of money she had, she gave it to my mother to help pay for my college degree. But you see, you won't see Queen Esther Hughes' picture on the front of your program. But if you go to little old Wichita, Kansas, 
and ask about Queenie Hughes. They will tell you that she was a woman who fed the poor. She was a woman who tended to the sick, no matter the race. And she was a woman who fought for the rights of African Americans in her town. She made it possible for me to have a voice, to have a say, to have a life that she would never see, but knew was very possible for me. So to my young people, my college students, and to those of you who are young at heart, <laughs> don't give your voice away. Don't give your voice away. Don't give up the dreams, the hopes, and the wishes that your families, your ancestors have worked so hard to make a reality for you. Don't allow the intended humiliations and injustices of the past or the present hinder you from speaking for your voice. Voice is not only your vote. Your voice is your degree. Your voice is your career. Your voice is the contributions that you make every day to your community that you make on behalf of your family. So I say this in closing. Let your voice be heard and let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Thank you. God bless.